Hello, everybody. My name is Jacob Good, and today I'll be telling you about my honors research project that I've been working on for the last two semesters, and that is the analysis of Ostrin in Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, or SARM, products. I did this research alongside Dr. Levi Milkey in the chemistry department at the University of Indianapolis. And first, the reason that I got into this project and I decided on this topic was that I myself am into fitness and weightlifting, and I saw this trend towards the use of these SARM products and people close to me, and I didn't know what they were. I didn't know why, or I knew that people were getting results, but I didn't know how they worked exactly. So I set out to first figure out how they worked, uh, which was part of my literature review. And then uh, we wanted to analyze the quality of these products and that's where our project started. So first we had to develop an effective method for the analysis of Osterin products using high performance liquid chromatography. And then once we had that method, we were able to analyze three different brands that we had purchased online and determine if the experimental amount of Ostrin was different from the label value that they listed. So getting to the methods, we went ahead and bought three brands. Those were Hard Body Edge, Swiss Chems, and Sarm Farm. We used one, we bought one bottle of each and we used 10 pills from each brand for analysis. Uh, the, it, we determined that the best way to prepare these samples in the method development was to use sonication in order to fully uh, dissolve the osterin from the pill contents because the pill contents weren't perfectly uh, soluble. So what we did was we used the HPLC and a ratio of 75 to 25 methanol and formic acid alongside a C18 nonpolar column and that allowed for the separation of these uh, the osterin molecule from the other things in the pill. And what we saw was that first we came up with a representative chromatogram and what we saw was that the standard peak and the sample peak were the same, and they came out at the same time, which was good because we knew the standard was uh, contained osterin because it was a high uh, purity, 99%, and we wanted it to be the same as the sample, which we saw here, and that was good to confirm that our method was actually extracting osterin and allowing us to quantify it by the peak area. So getting into how we quantified it, we made a range of standards that were 50, zero, or 50 ppm up to 500 ppm, which is parts per million. And we made this calibration curve that you see here. And what it allowed us to do was to find the peak area using the HPLC for the samples and then solve for the uh, concentration using the linear equation. And then through several other calculations, we were able to find milligrams of osterin in the pills and we compared it to the label value. And what we see here is that the results that were that there was a bit of deficiency in these pills. So SARM Farm on average was 40% plus or minus 4% of the label value. Swiss Chems was 64% plus or minus 4% of the label value. And Hard Body Edge was the best uh, at 85 plus or minus 11% of the label value. So you can see that these are all pretty deficient. Uh, we see that SARM Farm and Swiss Chems are more consistent in their pill uh, uh, contents in that they were only 4% of a range, whereas Hard Body Edge had a range of 11%. And this bar graph that was created, we thought showed uh, really well the average amount of Oster in the pills when compared to label value. So we have the Hard Body Edge here in blue coming in at 85% with the range not reaching 100, obviously. Uh, same goes for Swiss Chems and Sarm Farm. The error bars did not include 100%, so we can determine that they were, per they were deficient in a uh, pretty significant way, these two, and Hard Body Edge was also deficient. Uh, we think that this is indicative of a larger issue with unregulated drugs that are being used because uh, there's no consequence for these uh, companies which are selling these products that are underdosed, uh, and it's a dangerous situation for people who are using them without knowing a lot about them. Uh, so that was why we undertook this research project, and we... Uh, we're able to determine that there was a deficiency in the three bottles that we used of these three brands.